From the Encyclopedia of Life, this is One Species at a Time. I'm Ari Daniel Shapiro. There are countless animals that have a kind of power over humans that lure us in. They compel us to write mythologies. They make us gaze through a pair of binoculars. Usually the animals are big, charismatic things like tigers or pandas, but charisma can come in much smaller sizes too and trigger just as powerful an attraction. A few months ago, it's this appeal of the small that turned people out in droves. They're amazing. Let it there settle. You go. Now you can see those red underwings. Wow. Oh, wow. That's like awesome. We're in Frostwoods Park, a patch of green in East Brunswick, New Jersey, and our first of three stops. It's nighttime, about 9 p.m., and these couple dozen kids, parents, and neighbors are on the lookout. For moths. There's something kind of magical about being out at night with all kinds of biodiversity, everything from the size of a pinhead up to a moth as big as your hand. David Moskowitz is the co-founder of something called National Moth Week. In late July, for an entire week, over 300 moth-inspired events were hosted in every state in the U.S., except North Dakota. North Dakota, where are you? <laughs> and in numerous places around the world, Costa Rica, Gambia, Bulgaria, even the Azores in the middle of the Atlantic. There's always something to find. It's, it's like a treasure hunt. The other co-founder, Liddy Haramati, says National Moth Week's intended in part to cast aside the view that moths are just a swarm of ugly winged pests. Some of them are as beautiful as butterflies, or I think even more beautiful than butterflies. Such as the Io moth, or Automeris Io, Haramati's favorite, a bright yellow one with two big black eye spots on its wings. She says that looking for moths can be really rewarding. For one thing, in the U.S., moths outnumber butterflies by about 15 species to one. Not to mention that finding moths at night is pretty easy. All you have to do is turn on a light at night, and they'll come to you. You don't have to go look for them. Two and a quarter miles above sea level, perched atop the continental divide of Cottonwood Pass in central Colorado, our second stop, a generator roars to life, powering a bright light. It's nighttime, and the faces of a dozen people light up in its soft blue glow. Most of them are lepidopterists, who study moths and butterflies by profession. Someone's unrolled a screen in front of the light to catch the moths flapping through the cold mountain air. It's a hepialid, gracilis, for the first time in 30 awesome. years. Hold on just a second, it looks like there's something much bigger on the other side. Oh yeah, here we go. I think it's a laziestra. It's still kicking a little bit. Jean-Francois Landry, who drove here from Quebec, James Adams, who flew in from Georgia, and the rest of the group are collecting these high elevation moths. In terms of unknown diversity, new species, this is kind of the frontier. 